How? So, um, I was, I, I, my head, I thought, well, I'm coming because we've been soaking for a long time. Usually, I'm in Mozambique and you're in Canada. And, and <clears throat> I said, well, I'm going to see her face to face, you know, and we're going to soak together because as much as we love that we can soak by phone and we get wrecked and it's glorious and you're not invited to that meeting. <laughs> Just saying. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> so don't, yeah. <sighs> Show, wow. So I, I, I thought I'm coming, wow. Cause I went, and then, and then I got delayed by fire and not this fire. And I was freezing, so I was shaking. There was fire, there was smoke, there was shaking. Sometimes we don't understand, and sometimes it's a different thing. Anyway, I was still flowing with that music, still in my head. So I'm now, how? I love to worship. I, 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 I'm not transitioning. I just feel the Holy Spirit tap. That's how he, work, he works with me. There's this little tap. And I, whew, and I feel the tap, and then he says, get up. And that's, that's extraordinary for me, because when I first got radically wrecked, um, I couldn't get up. Seven days and seven nights. And some of you think, don't, don't talk about an old story. Well, it's a new one because um, there's a transition going on. And, and it may look differently, but the oils, the point, it's all about the oil. We have to, we have to, we, well, we have to understand it's all about the oil. We, 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 we have to understand it's all about the oil. We are face to face with Jesus in the secret place. And in that place, he pours out the oil. And so we, the, we are the ones found ready. We're the ones found ready. Hey, Joan. <laughs> you, you love the Holy Spirit. You love Holy Spirit. Are you, yours? yes. This, I'm seeing friends, you know. I, I'm going to share and, um, a message. It's 937, but there was a 9-11-11, It's an emergency, and it's also a place where we need to remember to live in the shadow of the Almighty. And he wants to remind us again and again and again. Um, the last several evenings... It's been 11-11, and I don't, I don't know if I'll go into it, but I'm, I've been undone by the signs of the times. And it's the greatest privilege to be alive on the planet. If I could have, well, I have looked throughout history um, and read history and looked throughout history and thought about history, the history of the church, the history of human beings, the history. And, and if I could pick a time in history to be alive, it would be right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. This is the best time to be alive on the history of the planet. I'm, sometimes when I meet people, when I'm able to get here, it, it was, I don't know, 18 months before I traveled, I think. I just home in this, the worst of times and the best of times. And I look forward to going back in a few days. But I remember when I met some of my family, and when we met each other, we just started weeping. We just fell apart. 
especially some of my um, some of my Mozambican family, some of our missionaries that can no longer return because of the war and because it's not possible. And even if they wanted to, we won't let them because it puts us all at greater risk. But when you meet face to face, there's something about it. And uh, when we met, I met different ones for the first time in several years. And, and just um, some of our, our missionaries and some of our friends, and we just started weeping because there's something about face to face. And, and for us, it was just, huh, it would be, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Like, I wasn't uh, so many times. Um, and so many hundreds and hundreds of people in our congregations are already in glory just this year. Been beheaded and crucified and burned. And some of you may think maybe they missed it. I say they went on ahead. And uh, I'm happy to remain. So I listen very intently to Holy Spirit and to my security teams. words are not cheap. And the oil is not cheap. And the blood of Jesus is not cheap. And the joy of the Lord is and will always be our strength. Hallelujah. Holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb. Oh, I pray you get. Thank you. That's nice. It's all good. This one. Um, oh, so, oh, I'll just keep it. I'm going to read from uh, First Kings, chapter four. The wife of a man from a company of prophets cried out to Elisha, "Your servant, my husband, is dead." She was really ticked and sad. And you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. And Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? I love to pause when it's late. I'm not going to speed up my words. I'm going to pause more. 
and I'll finish when it's time, but I'm not going to try to cram in more words because um, words are often cheap. So here's a woman in a situation, a famine, a terrible situation, crazy, worse than you having to wear a mask. <laughs> really hard. People are dying all around. Her sons are about to be sold into slavery. Can you imagine? Her sons are about to be sold into slavery. Sold into slavery because she can't pay her debts. It's so insanely painful. And then it gets worse. And her husband, who revered the Lord, by the way, loved God, he dies. And she She's upset. She's upset with the promises of God. She's upset with the prophets and the promises and the famine and the fact that her sons are about to be sold. She is very, very, very sad and hurting and broken and upset. She's not in a kumbaya moment. And the prophet replies, how can I help you? I love that. <laughs> but then he has the nerve to ask, what do you have in your hand or in your house? That just looks creepy <laughs> in a famine. That just looks crazy in a time of distress and hunger and pain and sorrow. What do you have in your hand? First he says, how can I help you? That sounds pretty good. She's got a whole long list. And then he says, what's in your hand? You remember another story when Jesus is looking out at the multitudes, just crazy lot of people. <sighs> I understand looking out at multitudes of hungry people. I understand looking out at multitudes of hungry people. And I un understand looking at, at my little lunch, my little bread, our little movements, lunch and bread, a little bit of bread, a little bit of lunch, a little bit of lunch and a little bit of bread and looking at way more people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people and looking at Jesus and saying, here's my lunch again. Though I feel so bizarrely small. You see, he's not... He's not asking you for a lot. But he is asking you for everything. <laughs> We're all little pots. Hey, that's all we are. I know we're sons and daughters and kings and queens and servants and brides and slaves. We're little pots in the master's hands. And who are we to tell him what to do with us? He's the potter. We're the pot. Time to yield. 
But golly, pots can be filled. Pots can be filled. And Holy Spirit can flow through yielded vessels. Do you want to be one? Still? What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? (laughs) Don't think too much. Because it'll freak you out. If you think about what you have in your hand, it'll freak you out. I'm not taking an offering again. Don't work. But God is. Not me. It's about your entire life laid down. It was um, interesting the, the, the way I came in. I landed in... New York with security stuff. Went to New Jersey with a a wonderful group of very intelligent people. And then I went, um, where I go next? Oh, I went to uh, VOA. And uh, I was was there again, and there's Randy again doing his impartation meeting. And uh, I love it. I didn't want to miss it. Didn't matter. Didn't matter how many times I've been wrecked, how much it cost, how many times I got stuck to the floor, thrown upside down, bruised black and blue, misunderstood, ridiculed, shaken, and stirred. Didn't matter. Shot at, beaten, stoned, jailed, shipwrecked. I wanted to be there again. And so I... I, uh, I have some people now that help me sometimes. One of them's about this tall. I look, I look, I'm slightly taller than her. She's slightly smaller than me. It's really cool. (laughs) And the other one, he was slightly bigger. And he had more melanin. And he's really, an amazing son in the spirit. And she's an amazing daughter and friend and a mama. And there they were, and I said, I got to get in there. I'm getting in there. And I'm sitting there. Well, no, I wasn't sitting. She'd always be honest. I wasn't sitting. I was on, well, I don't know. I was sitting, then it was on my face, then I was sitting, I'm not sure, but I made sure to have a pillow. I learned a long time ago, have a pillow. So there I was, and then here he goes. And then, I don't know what happened, but he came up to me, this is, how many years now? It was 96, how many years is that? Okay. Feels like 26, but it, last year was a little longer. Yeah. Anyway, there he comes again. Same little old me. Same little old me guy. Same little old me guy. Still humble as ever, even though the name of the conference freaks you out. Just saying, some people. And he comes down like this. And he's like, God wants to know, do you still want the nation of Mozambique? (laughs) Down I went again. 
do you think that I think I'm not just a little catalyst? Just a little, 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 little catalyst? I know I'm a little, little catalyst. I'm just a little pot, a little catalyst. Hey, that little boy just had a little bit of lunch. That's all he had. That little, that little widow just had a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour, a little bit in the midst of a whole lot of nothing. But what did she do? What did that little boy do? Hi. I don't think you're understanding. So you, we are all just little, 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 little. But it's about him. We fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the prize. He's the purpose. He's the one. And we fix our eyes on him and we allow Holy Spirit to flow through us, to gush through us like a mighty river. And he can flow through any old pots and any little, little, little old or young. Anybody who's willing for him to flow. So you want to flow. Do you want him to flow? Or, or are you just good? Are you all good? You're all good? The world's all good? Everything's fine? Praise Jesus. Got a frequent pass. Go up and down. Up and down I go. To the heavens, I got a pass. Is everything all good with you? Is it all, is everything all just the world just, ah, Is there still a need for Holy Spirit to flow through little lives laid down? Is there somebody willing to give him everything? If you look too hard at yourself or too long at yourself, you won't, you won't, you won't because you'll just say, forget it, it's impossible. Exactly. It is impossible. It is totally impossible. That's why it's called supernatural. <laughs> Holy. It's impossible for God. No, nothing's impossible for God. That is, nix that out. Don't splice it up and stick it somewhere. <laughs> nothing's impossible for God. It's impossible for you to do anything without Jesus and anything without the body of Christ. And that's why when, they, when I got my pillow, because I understand. And why I gave him water, because I understand. Because seven days and seven nights on a floor, you need a pillow and water. And maybe a restroom. <laughs> but they're okay, it's not seven days yet. Do you understand? You learn, you learn, you learn from that place. And then you learn and you learn and you learn that you, you, you just want to grow down. You just want to grow down and you never want to forget. You never, ever, ever want to forget. And some people say, oh, no, 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 we're not, we're not going back there. We're talking about Holy Spirit flowing through and touching human flesh. <laughs> Hello, are you not going there? <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. Right now, right here, I don't know. All I know is I want Holy Spirit to flow through my life laid down. And I, I can pray he flows through your life laid down, but I can't lay down for you. I can't give my life for you. It's yours to give. Unless you're my child and you're young. <laughs> then I can just say, we're going. We didn't give our kids a choice. We're moving. We're moving. They came with us. 
after that, it's, it's you. It's your choice. Your choice. The more you yield to God, the more, the more you want to say yes. So I know you're getting tired. You've been at this a while. So have I, though. But I'm, I'm going to... I really have, yeah. Whew. Whew. This last... Whew, since I landed, whoa! <laughs> Boy, I've had eight hours sleep. Yeah, it's just been over a week. <laughs> no, maybe ten. Don't, yeah, maybe ten. Your servant has nothing there except a little oil. And Elisha says, go round and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Cool. I'm going to go do that. Don't ask just for a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil. Shut the door behind you and your sons. I want to say that again. Shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and your sons. Hey, secret is a secret place. Secret is the secret place. Pour oil in all the jars, in all the jars, in all of them. And as each is filled, put it to one side. Put the oil in all the jars. Pour it in, pour it in, pour it in. How is that possible? She's upset. She's tired. She's sad. She's hungry. She's broken. She's broke. And here comes this man of God. This is, what do you have in your hand? Do you know Jesus? This is what I think about Jesus. I think a lot about Jesus. I think about Jesus all the time. Night and day, I think about Jesus. I love Jesus. I think about him. He's on my mind. I don't like to get him off my mind ever. I don't get him off my mind in the village. I don't get him off my mind in the heat. I, I almost got him off my mind as, as those white drop frozen things were flowing, falling on me. And I had on sandals tonight getting here. But I brought my mind back because my mind needs to be fixed on Christ. Hey! Then all the circumstances, well, they'll work out. It'll all work out. Oh, I almost said something that I'm not going to say. Thank you, Jesus. It's so good when you fix your mind on Christ and he says, zippy na boca. <laughs> really awesome when he does that. Sometimes we just say it anyway, but it's really good to listen. Zippy. It's the same in English probably. Zip, zippy. <laughs> don't say it. Holy Spirit's like, don't say it. I almost did again, and, and it was clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shut the door. Pour out oil into the jars. Each is filled on one side. She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. And they kept on bringing these jars to her. And she kept pouring. And when the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. And then the oil stopped flowing. Well, she went on and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Wow. That's a whole lot of oil. And this is an Old, old Testament story. It's very, very powerful. Um, and I'm going to just give a little bit more about it, but I want to look at the New Testament for a minute. Um, another place where it's talking about the oil. Uh, it's the um, Matthew 25, 1 through 4. 
At the time my, my coming draws near, heaven's kingdom realm can be compared to the ten maidens who took their oil lamps and went outside to meet the bridegroom and his bride. Five of them were foolish and ill-prepared, for they took no extra oil for their lamps. Five of them were wise and sensible, for they took flasks, flasks, flasks of oil, olive oil with them for their lamps. And when the bridegroom didn't come when they expected, hey, they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. Wake up. That was free. Not for him or me, actually. Whoa. Nothing free about that. Just looked weird. Felt weird. Hmm. But it's okay. Yes, Lord. <sighs> Sometimes expl- explanation helps. Sometimes you just think we're, we're just we're just so used to that. <sighs> to be yielded. Ooh, last night was, I got yielded, and uh, I didn't feel, I didn't feel presence at the end. You know how you're just ready to go like some of you, so please do, as you know, feel free. I mean it, I'm not being difficult, you need to go, feel free. Um, and, and so, and that's why, it, I, oh, you're still here? Oh, so, that's wild. Anyway, whoa different tribe. It's all good. I love it. It's all good. Whoo, whoo. I almost lost my point there. So last night, yeah, uh, 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 I was just, um, felt like the Lord told me to wait. And uh, the night before, he told me to leave at uh, 1112. And I didn't understand, but I said, okay, we're going to leave. I'm going to, I didn't, I don't tell them what they were going to do. That's not up to me. That's up to the people in the host. I'm not the people uh, that are being told what, anyway, never mind. Uh, uh, Too much information. I just had to listen to Holy Spirit for myself. And Holy Spirit really, I felt an impression that he spoke to me to leave the building. And when it's in that kind of an atmosphere, you kind of need to know when you're gonna go or stay or what you're gonna do or not. But for me, after 25 years, I like to know. Just if he has an inkling to let me know. But if not, it's okay, just saying. So there I was and um, uh, I, I I said to, Rebecca, I said, um, let me know when it's, uh, um, what time it is in a bit. And, uh, cause I need to leave at 1112. And I'm thinking, that's so weird. People are like, that's weird. I didn't tell the people that. No, maybe I did. I told them we were leaving in an hour. So I was true to my word. They had big red clocks. There's one. Yo, I, I knew I'd see it. That's awesome. So they had these big red clocks in there, and, and, and I, sometimes they tick down, sometimes they tick up. It depends which stream you're in. <laughs> and, and so I'm look, I, I can't look because I'm plastered face down. And, and I'm face down, and then she taps me, and she says, it's 11-11. And I got up, 11-11-11-11-11-11-11. Anyway, there's, look up 11-11. There's so much about 11-11. And it's 11-11-11-11-11-11. And I'm like, oh, it's 11-11-11-11. And then I said, now. And I went. I went out the back. I didn't use the restroom. Nothing. I went. Why? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. So here I am the next night. 
I'm not feeling a thing. I'm happy. I love Jesus. He's wonderful. He's always good. I'm sure he touched people because he does, and it's his word, and I'm happy, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, and my flesh is ready to go, and my heart's ready to go, and I'm ready to go. And the pastor was ready to go. I understand. Some of you are ready to go right now and be free. I told you three, four times, be free, free, free. Chow, chow, chow. <laughs> and I, I'm fine with everybody going. I didn't, I didn't, God didn't ask me about all the other people. He just asked me to stay till 11, 11 again. And I said, Lord, that's crazy, but yes. I'm just saying, sometimes I have, I, it's not that I never have discussion. It's just that I always want to say yes, but sometimes it's like, Lord, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to him there's no anointing in the room. <laughs> I'm just telling him, you know, we're done. You, you, I mean, he's here. He's always here. I know he's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Yay! I know that. But, you know, when Holy Spirit's crashing in the room, you're like, yeah. I don't care if it's four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But if you feel the Holy Spirit lifting, you're like, let's go now. Out we go. Give me some big guys. Um, you understand. And, and so, so I, I, I'm just like, I just want to go. I'm not stuck to the floor. I do have my pillow, my head's down because I, I, I don't want to be really uncomfortable. I was super uncomfortable. I was saying, Lord, what are we doing? I feel really so crazy right now. And I, I'm, I'm, I, I haven't slept much, so maybe that's the problem. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just trying. And, and some of you are like, wow, you must really hear God so clearly. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to hear God. Maybe, maybe I, I was missing it. But this, I know I didn't this time, but you know what I mean? Sometimes you think, I love step over the bodies. It's just, I, it would be awesome if there were more of them, but it's good. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just like, okay, God. And, and then it's getting really uncomfortable because it's like really uncomfortable because the pastor's done. The worship team, you know, when they transition, they put on the, the, the music, you know what I'm saying? They're super gone, you know, and you're just still there. And, and you're not feeling anything except that you just want to obey. And I'm like, God, I just, I just want to obey, and I don't understand. And, and after all these years, this is still looking very strange to me. And I'm sure they all want to go home. Most of them did. And I'm here waiting, and I don't understand, but it's okay. I'm telling him it's okay, fighting with my brain and my heart, saying, Lord, I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand, but I'm just going to yield, 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 and I don't understand. I'm having a conversation. He said, get that, that little sweet girl. She was still there. There was one sweet girl. I, I, I've been really petrified of flaggers because I got knocked out one time. <laughs> Seriously, knocked out by a flagger, bam, in my head, spinning. And I mean, knocked out. It was a Jill Austin's meeting. And oh man, since then, if they get near me with the flags, I'm like, Jesus. And I, I'm like, I'm hiding. And so this girl's like a flagger, and she's just, she's so anointed. She hands me the flags. I'm like, oh yes, okay, Jesus, I'm gonna try. And then I just handed them to some other precious, sweet girl. And she was just as, um, uncomfortable <laughs> but this the girl that that girl you know she had an anointing with it anyway I, I, I I'm down there and, and the Lord the Lord's like remember what I that lesson you can't do anything you know without Jesus not you know I hope you know you can do nothing without Jesus nothing without the body of Christ when two or more are gathered so I said to this Sweet girl, it just, I mean, I could move, but I didn't want to, and I didn't want to look around because I felt so ridiculous and uncomfortable in every way. So I, I reached out to this sweet girl, and I said, could you pray for me right now because I need two or more, and I, I, I don't know what's going on, but 
could you just pray with me right now? And there was something about it when she, she started praying for me. I reached out. I was in need. You know, I was in need of, of someone agreeing with, with me. I didn't tell her about what was going on or why. I just took her hand because she was there. And she was, she was sweet. And she started praying. And I, 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 I just appreciated it. Hey! And then I had asked the host, because I could speak and I could move. I said, tell me when it's 11 11. Because I was so ready to go. So ready. So they were like an hour ago. She said, it's 11 11. As soon as she said 11 11, Holy Spirit hit me. Bam! I started sobbing. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. I was like, oh, God. Lord, I'm, I'm weeping now. Now I'm having trouble getting up. And, and the Lord, I'm going to tell you because it's so holy. And so holy. See, we, we don't always understand when, it, when it's about obedience, we don't always understand. Like, do you want a nation? Never think it's on your own. Do you want to feed a multitude? It's never on your own. Do you want to do anything? It's never on your own. It's always with Jesus in the body of Christ. Everything we do is with Jesus in the body of Christ. Or it's worthless, completely, utterly, totally worthless. Worthless, worthless. It's all going to burn. What we do for Christ will remain. Fix your eyes on Christ. He's the prize. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So I get up and now I actually do need help. And now I actually am going to stop in the restroom. It wasn't like the night before. It wasn't just go, don't stop. This time it's, it's very, very different from the night before. And I'm trying to learn the dance that I'm dancing with my father, with my Lord. And I miss steps, but I'm trying to move with him, put my hands in his hands, my feet on his feet. Hey! And there I go, I go back to the restroom. Earlier that night, they misinterpreted something and they had moved all the people away from the restroom so I could use the restroom and it mortified me, petrified me, upset me, hurt me. None of those things were anything they wanted to do. They wanted to honor me. I was about to speak about from Philippians 2, 3. Last thing I'd want to do is push somebody out of the way or cut in the queue. So instead of just zipping a boca, the Lord asked me to explain. And then he has me wait to 11, 11. And now I'm going back to that same restroom. I was mortified. The only reason I asked if there was another restroom is because I didn't want to miss any worship. Not because I wanted anyone to be moved out of my way. Ninety percent or so of my time I used latrines and the dust and it's hot. And so my, fl my flesh was mortified by what took place earlier, my flesh, my heart, my spirit. So I explained because I knew they didn't mean to, to make me feel uncomfortable. They actually meant to do the opposite. Sometimes in the body of Christ, we misunderstand each other so terribly. And if we don't explain, we're in huge trouble. Sometimes we just misunderstand, we hurt each other, and we don't mean to. We're trying to help, and we're trying to bless, and we're trying, most of the time, people are trying to be kind, even in the church. <laughs> and so, there I was, back in that same restroom, and, 
And uh, I come out, and there's this sweet um, Chinese girl that had been to our, our harvest school in Mozambique when you still could, when people could still go. And I just hold her, I'm just holding her, and she's weeping, and Holy Spirit's falling, you know. Like, really, he loves to move in, in those rooms, you know, he does, he does. He falls in those rooms, those restrooms. I, I thank Jesus I've never been absolutely stuck to the latrine floor. I'm, I'm so grateful, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful, Holy Spirit. That just came to me. I'm so thankful, Jesus. So thankful. So there I was, and this, this um, woman comes in. And um, she's an Indian woman, and um, she falls at my feet. So I go lower, believe me. And we're in the bathroom floor. The same bathroom that they cleared people out of to honor me, the Lord knew how to tell me that Obedience was better than sacrifice because he came to me <laughs> through this homeless Indian woman <laughs> who, who, who grabbed my feet. She'd been praying and trying to get to where I was for so long. And she, she'd been living in her car.
we're going to end in worship. Oh. Some of you need to go to your rooms. It's really important that you go to your room. In fact, it's, it's necessary. It's necessary. Please, 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 listen to Holy Spirit. There's no games. There's no acting. There's no need for someone else to see what happens with you. Some of the greatest times I have are in complete, total secrecy where no one's there but him. Holy, 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 holy. So maybe you need to go right now. Please, please, please. Maybe you need to go to your room, to your home, to your child, to your children. If you have some of them in child care, in children's church worship, please go and get them and take them with you home or bring them here. I don't know. I don't understand. But for the third night in the row, not knowing why, not knowing what it will look like, not knowing, and feeling very, very foolish again. I am going to wait in this room again. If that's not you, please don't. It's, this is not. If it's not your assignment tonight, please go. If you're spectating, I insist that you go. I insist. No, I beg. Yes, I beg. I beg. I'm begging. I only beg when it gets to this place. And I will not be laying hands on you. So please do not ask me to, for tonight is another thing. I don't know. like but the world is waiting in eager expectation for the sons and the daughters full of oil Yeah. 
A positioning. There's a positioning of a vessel who will be filled. There's a place of obedience for a vessel will be filled for a vessel who I can trust says the Lord is a vessel
securely found securely found my hope in you securely found securely Thank you.